What's up guys, Daniel Clayman here. I, I've been meaning to put this video together for a few months now and I'm going to show you these four brand new duplexes that I built and I'm going to show you exactly what they cost to the penny. So really quickly, my name is Daniel Clayman. If you're not familiar with me, I live in Richmond, Virginia. I build real estate. I built software for real estate investors. Uh, I, I got into this business back in 2000 nine with with zero money i'm a first generation immigrant i was 12 when they moved to this country had a corporate job in 2008 i was laid off uh broke uh, got into real estate real estate absolutely changed my life so i'm, I'm very passionate uh, these days about uh, helping other people uh, do the same so uh, I currently own and manage roughly $60 million portfolio of income producing properties, everything from single family homes to duplexes to mixed use buildings to larger apartment buildings. And, and I always like to say that it's non syndicated, which means that I actually own uh, the bulk of my portfolio rather than owning one or 2% of it and bragging online about how many units I own. So this is a portfolio that I've built very carefully and I continue to scale. And in, in, in a year or two, uh, this portfolio is going to exceed a hundred million dollars, mostly through ground up development. So I, in my business right now, build again, largely multifamily. This is a, a, a four unit project that I just finished. This is a 16 unit project, a mixed use building that we're finishing now. This is a 40 unit apartment project with 8,000 square feet of retail that I am in the middle of building currently. It's going to look like this when it's done. I've got larger uh, projects in planning and permitting right now, multifamily, but I got started in new construction building duplexes and, you know, duplexes that look like this. And I absolutely love still in my business building duplexes and smaller rental properties because they are fairly easy to build you can build them by residential building code people love living in them it doesn't take a huge amount of money to build them and they cash flow fantastically even with the higher interest rates and higher costs of construction so i recently finished these four duplexes this is what they look like it's it, it, they look like quads on the outside, but really it's it's four separate lots and it's one duplex and we attach it to another duplex and then do the same thing next to it. So this is eight rental units. They look like this. They each have, each apartment has a separate entrance from the outside. They, they turned out beautifully. They have off-street parking in the back, large private decks in the rear for each tenant, we give them eight foot decks so that they have room to set up dining and a lounge out there. We give them outdoor ceiling fans, give them easy access to their parking in the rear. So this is what the project looks like. You can see I did this as part of a larger development where we built some single family homes for sale as well. But the four duplexes are here in the middle of that development. And we built and sold some single family homes here and some single family townhomes here. But inside, we raised up the ceilings on the second floor. So the second floor has 12 foot ceilings, absolutely gorgeous. And raising the ceilings cost us a little bit more money, but tenants, potential tenants walked into these units and were, were absolutely blown away by just how open the space felt. And we, we got rental applications really, really quickly before we were, you know, we were probably three months away from finishing construction and every one of these units was leased. So again, big open floor plans, big kitchens, wine racks, quartz countertops, you know, two, two, two toned cabinets, stainless steel appliances. We've got, uh, in some bathrooms we used granite tops and some bath bathrooms we use quartz tops, LVP on the floor, so they turned out really, really nice. So I have another video on our YouTube channel, which is probably where you're watching this. Put this video out a couple of months ago. It's called How to Get Free Land. It's an upzoning and development case study. And in that video, I give more of a background on this project, on how it came about. And there are some really, really, I think, 
rarely taught strategies there that I share on how to turn something that's not a deal at all into a fantastic deal and create low land bases for yourself so that you're developing real estate on land that you're actually buying below market value. So I highly recommend you watch that video if you haven't watched it yet because it's gonna give you uh, some really great insights on how to create development opportunities where uh, none currently exist, okay? So in this video, I'm gonna break down the order of events and construction for you. I'm gonna show you exactly what these duplexes cost to plan and to build, and we'll break it down by cost category. So it's gonna be really granular. I'll show you exactly where I went over budget because I, I went over budget big time on this project, but I'll also show you at the end how this deal ended up performing. And spoiler alert, it still performed pretty great. And I'm gonna show you how to replicate our systems very easily so you can do the same. So stick around, this is a, a longer video and I'm gonna go through a lot of detail here but if you're interested in, in ground of development and specifically in building duplexes, I think you'll get a lot of value out of this. All right, so let's keep going. And, and by the way, I'm going to give you a, a cool resource that if you have not downloaded this, you should grab it today. If you're buying land, whether it's to develop or to wholesale or to flip, being knowledgeable about the landmines to look for in land and how to do your due diligence properly to make sure that this land is not going to have major issues with it which will prevent development is super important so if you go to the link that you see here under your screen rehabvaluator.com forward slash list i'm giving you uh, i've put together a very detailed six page land due diligence checklist that you can download and save there's no strings attached it's a gift that i'm giving you today but it's going to be a tremendous resource for you in order to be able to properly conduct due diligence on, on infill lots or large raw pieces of land that you're buying to make sure that you're not overpaying and, and that you're actually gonna be able to, to make money on this land. So go to this link, download this, and let's keep going. All right, so check this out. I am inside my uh, Rehab Valuator Premium account, which is where we budget for all of these projects and where we track all of our projects. So here's what I originally built. I originally built a full budget, line item by line item for this project. And I'll walk you through, I'll walk you through all of these line items. Now, during the project, we have a very easy way here to track our actual costs. And you can do this every time you pay somebody or you can bulk upload the transactions. But what I have in the end is I've got this track feature which shows me my budget versus my actual. So what did these four duplexes cost to build? Now, each one of these duplexes is about 20, roughly 2,400 square feet. So altogether, this project is 9,600 square feet. So what did these four duplexes cost? cost to build. Well, I budgeted a total of $1,268,000 and we came in over $114,000 higher. Now, how does that look per square foot? You can see between my soft costs and my hard costs, I budgeted $132 per foot and we came in at over 144, so I'm close to $12 a foot over budget. So I'm gonna show you what accounts for most of that budget overrun, okay? So let's break this down. Soft costs, architectural and engineering. So you can see altogether soft costs cost me $6.23, uh, $6.23 per foot. Right, so architectural and engineering, building permits, and then holding costs. And we can break this down further, right? Architectural and engineering, surveying, 
I, I've never budgeted for a subdivision survey, which we end up having to pay for, right? There's surveyor fees during construction, my architectural drawings. Yeah, this is a residential project. So your architectural drawings all in should run you between a dollar and two dollars a foot for something like this. In the case of this project, we had to go through a special use permit to rezone it, which again, I talk about in the other video. So I'm a little bit on the higher side here, but still, Overall, I'm a dollar fifty per foot for my architectural drawings. Then I had all the fees associated with the rezoning, including the application fee, all of my consultant fees. And so if I click on any one of these cost categories, I can see to the penny how I arrived at that cost. Here's every time I paid somebody for that cost category. Soil report, I under budgeted and then this is something that I completely failed to budget for. You can see I have a negative almost $6,000 variance here, but I completely failed to budget for the fact that we would, even though it's a residential project, we would need LDAS drawings here and uh, basically civil drawings and plans. So here's, here are my costs for my civil drawings, which because this was a larger project on a larger site, we it turned out we were required by the city to create civil drawings. So those are my architectural permitting, right? My, my building permits are here. I was I actually under, over budgeted for my building permits. So I saved versus my budget four and a half thousand dollars. And then my holding costs, real estate taxes, and insurance. So whenever you're budgeting for projects like this, I, I always budget for anywhere between usually six to eight dollars per foot in soft costs for residential and probably ten to twelve dollars per foot for commercial projects. So we're we're right in line here. Now let's look at our hard costs and I'm gonna walk you through this so first of all, we have to demo the structure. This used to be a medical office building. It was on, it was vacant. It sat on a half acre lot. So after I got my rezoning approved, after I was able to subdivide this piece of land into multiple lots, we had to go in and we had to demo this structure. And we had to get rid of it. So my demo, I budgeted for just under $15,000, it came in a little bit lower at 12 grand. So I, I actually saved money versus my budget on demo. So after you demo it, you've got to clear your site. You've got to clear and grade the site so that now you're ready to dig footers. So my foundation category here includes all of those costs. So you can see how we've broken out site prep, right? That includes scraping the site, installing silt fence, digging and pouring footers, concrete to pour your footers. So you can see this was the next phase of the project. Footers were dug, concrete was poured in the footers, and then a block foundation was built on top of the concrete footers. So this was, this was a video I shot at the time of this project. And we were building some, some houses next to these duplexes, as I mentioned. All right, so this was the foundation. So you can see here how I broke out footers and foundation, including termite treatment. And so how did we do on the foundation? Well, all in all, I actually came in about $4,200 under budget. Foundation came in at $11.6 per foot. Again, that includes preparing the site, digging the footers, pouring the footers, and then building the block foundation. And the other piece of this was pouring the concrete slab. So I keep hitting on this. If I go here, again, let's break this down. So foundation gets built and then the plumber comes in and does what's called groundwork, which I have in a separate category here, but plumber comes in and does 
groundwork, which means they put all the underground drainage pipes into the foundation, right? So you can see these pipes poking out of the ground. This is all drainage pipes for kitchen sink, bathroom sink, showers, sewer, right? Toilet, all of this is going into the foundation and then the slab is prepped and then the slab is poured. A, dump, uh, a pump truck comes out and pours a concrete slab so that all of the plumbing is essentially locked in, right? So you can see here, I budgeted for stone for the slab, labor to pour the slab, and then termite treatment of the slab before it actually gets poured, right? So you can see here now, if you look at this, you say, well, there is no actual cost for concrete for slab or stone, how can that be? But then I went over budget here by 40 grand. Well, this just has to do with how I was being built, right? All of this, all of these cost categories got built to me here in one big invoice, right? You can see here. So it's just a different breakdown in my invoicing versus how I budgeted it. But all in all, my foundation, including my concrete slab, cost me 11 point six dollars per foot and I was a little bit under budget so let's keep going right I mentioned plumbing groundwork so this is this is the piece of the plumbing contract where the plumber puts in what's required to go into the slab so that happens next and then once the groundwork is in and the concrete slab is poured we can start framing so let's look at my framing budget the way I broke out my budget was lumber for main structure, lumber for rear stairs, labor to build rear stairs, main labor to build the structure, and trusses, right? So materials and labor, and then cost for the crane, and then staircases that go into each one of my duplexes. So all in all, I end up going over budget here by $9,000, right? The, if you are building on the concrete slab, your, la your framing costs and your labor costs are going to be less than if you're building on the crawl. So you can see here, everything we built here is on top of concrete slabs. These are the duplexes. These are the townhomes that we built separately, right? But this is the framing portion of the project. So how, how do we do, right? Uh, nine grand over budget, where did I go over? Well, I under budgeted my lumber by 6,700 bucks and I under, under budgeted my trusses, but I actually over budgeted on lumber for rear stairs. So, and my crane costs came in quite a bit higher because we had to instead of renting a crane we had to rent a lull and keep it on the project for a couple of weeks in order to get everything up to the second floor and 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 into the roof that we needed to so anyway this is the framing portion and and the cool thing about this platform and again this is why i really developed it for myself is because i can track down down all the way to the invoice level right if i if i look at this and i say how did i go over by 6700 bucks I can click here and every time I paid an invoice for lumber, I have it here and I can track it. And I can, I can even look at individual invoices, right? So if I go to my transactions and you'll see we did this project mostly in 2023. We finished it right in the fall of 2023. So I'm a little bit late recording this video, but the costs really have not changed much in the last nine months. So this is very, very relevant. But I can go through and I can actually search specific invoices by going here and searching for framing, for example, right? So here's my framing package. And I can, I can drill down to the specific invoices and we use 84 lumber for our framing packages lately, right? So again, full clarity on my costs. So this was framing and obviously as my framers are building the duplexes, they are installing windows. And again, I, I under budgeted for windows 
because we end up getting a black vinyl windows here instead of white and so I, I end up paying up for black windows and and I end up getting larger windows than we normally install because again I raised the ceiling heights on my second floor to 12 feet so as you can see here with 12 foot ceilings I didn't want to install short windows because it would look funny so I end up ordering larger windows for the second floor and so my, my, my window costs were a little bit higher obviously then exterior doors same thing versus my budget I end up spending more on exterior doors than, than I budgeted so let's keep going through the project after windows exterior doors get installed then you have roof and roof we break down into main roof and porch roofs so I, I made a major major boo-boo on my roof material budget because between when I budgeted and when we actually end up doing the project uh, roof material specifically rubber roof end up going up quite a bit and I think in my budget I had slightly uh, wrong measurements as to the total roof size so I mean I made a major mistake budgeting here for my roof which I, I won't make that mistake on the next project but I under I over budgeted for my labor and they and they way over budgeted for my porch roof materials we end up finding a better supplier and end up saving quite a bit of money and then the labor to do my porch roofs was actually included in my main roof labor and we paid it all at the same time so all in all on my roof I went over budget by about 31 cents per square foot not a big deal so in the order of events once my building is tried in and I have a roof we start roughing in trades so you will see here plumbing roughing HVAC roughing electrical roughing so my plumber comes in he's already down the groundwork now he is now that the framing is done he is roughing in plumbing you can see here PEX pipes my electrician is putting in electrical panels and roughing in all of our electrical and then HVAC contractor comes in runs all of our duct work and line sets and roughs in HVAC so my, my plumbing was pretty much on budget my HVAC roughen I under budgeted a little bit versus what where my costs ended up coming in again remember oftentimes we're building this budget before we have all of the bids in and so you do your best to estimate this project but then you get all of your bids in from your subcontractors and by that point you might have already decided to do the deal well my labor costs here came in a little bit higher on HVAC and then on electrical rough and this is really where we end up shitting the bed and so part of what we do at the end of every project is really doing kind of an autopsy to find out why were our why were our predicted costs lower than where we end up coming in and in this case again electrical uh, subcontractors just ended up coming in a lot more expensive than our previous projects because at the time when I was building this there was quite a bit of construction happening so went over budget on electrical after all of your trades get roughed in on the inside of the building insulation happens all right this is actually it's the only picture I could find of insulation this is when we walked it with one of our development masterminds right but it, the building gets insulated and then drywall is hung meanwhile on the outside siding gets installed gutters downspouts get installed so all of that is happening at the same time as on the inside trade roughing is happening insulation drywall so how do we do on on, on siding well siding and you can see right one of my biggest cost overruns in this whole project like what accounts for this twelve dollars a foot overrun and again I every project we learn lessons on and I'm gonna show you at the end of this video how this project performed financially for me and this is where buying land correctly and doing good deals comes in handy because you're going to have cost overruns but they're manageable they're tolerable so one of my biggest cost overruns was here siding three 
almost four dollars a foot cost overrun here which is basically a third of my total cost overrun on this whole project so again one of the things i do at the end of each project is is i do this kind of an autopsy with the data available to me and figure out where i went wrong on my budgeting to make sure i don't make the same mistake again so i can click through here into siding and i can see okay my my actual siding my my hardy plank siding i I under I underbid or me I overbid right so I actually end up generating savings here but my trim materials all of my all of my columns all of my um, all of my corner trim fascia soffits I end up massively underestimating and so was my labor estimate and when I look back on it it looks like I really did this estimating based on two duplexes and not four and so I can, again, I can track down exactly where all my money was spent and, and where my budget did not take into account sufficient takeoffs and measurements, right? And then the other major mistake I made here was in my, in my porch column ceiling rear second floor, I, I took into account the fact that we would have to build rear decks, but I completely forgot to take into account the metal railings that would have to go to support those rear staircases to lead people back to the parking. So I can see here almost $12,000 of my cost overrun. So $12,000 out of this was the powder coated aluminum rails that we had to install in the back of the property. So we autopsy this and we make sure that with a, on the next project, we don't make the same mistake again. So siding insulation, drywall my drywall I actually end up saving money on versus my budget I overspent a little bit on materials but I generated savings on labor so all in all worked out in the order of events right you've got drywall then we actually install cabinets and then we install interior doors and trim and then we paint right so you can see then my cabinets get covered up my trim gets installed and then we go in and paint and at the same time you can see here my siding was being finished all of this all of this exterior trim this is all pvc this is all stuff that i i under budgeted for unfortunately and then we build the rear stairs in the back and all of these stairs and all of these back porches required metal railings which i chose to put in powder coated aluminum rails instead of the cheap vinyl or uh, salt treated wood rails which would have saved me money but would not have lasted as long so insulation is done drywall is done my kitchens are in my interior doors and trim are in painting is done let's go back to our track view right painting is done and then we start our HVAC trim out plumbing trim out electrical trim out so exterior is finished siding is done porches are done rear stairs are done and then we start finishing the inside right so lights get hung plumbing fixtures get installed all the vents are put in the air handler is installed for our hvac and then we start doing our flooring so again i i had some cost overruns here mostly on on the hvac just because we we end up having subs that that came in higher than our previous projects it happens right on budget with electric trim out a little bit a little bit higher on plumbing than where i budgeted primarily because of labor right on the budget with fixtures but i end up saving money on my flooring and tile right so on, on the ground floor because we pour a concrete slab we install a floating floor we install lvp and then on the second floor, I, I'm able to nail down three quarter inch hardwoods. So there I install natural oak hardwood floors. And then the bathrooms, we do a floating LVP. So you can see here, I actually end up saving money on, on my flooring materials. I went over on, on the three quarter inch hardwoods. Uh, here, this is really LVP. So I saved money. I, I got a really great deal on LVP. So I saved a ton of ton of dough on the LVP right on the money with labor and then 
I end up getting a nicer LVP for the baths than I originally budgeted. So I overspent here, but I end up saving quite a bit of money on the labor because the stuff is actually pretty easy to install, right? And then so from here, it's pretty simple. Appliances, which I was, I was almost on budget. So my, my washer and dryer was factored into to my overall costs here. But we end up getting uh, nicer fridges than I originally budgeted for. And then all the accessories, which we actually generated quite a bit of savings. I, I, I saved money on, on wire shelving, bathroom fixtures, all that stuff. We saved quite a bit of money on blinds, savings on accessories. So, so the last piece of this audit that I need to figure out is where where did we go wrong here? This is the other, this is almost half of my entire cost over on this landscaping and fencing. Look at this, I budgeted for the entire project, 23 and a half grand, and I made a huge mistake because we end up spending so much more here that almost half of my entire budget overrun comes from this cost category. So what happened? Let's look at it. And so here you can see we're installing blinds, installing bath accessories, curved shower rods, towel bars, etc., etc. So let let let's look at landscaping and fencing. What what the hell happened here that made me go over by almost six dollars a foot on this whole project? Well, you can see here that my landscaping costs came in quite a bit higher than I budgeted because the city ended up forcing us as part of our special use permit to plant a lot more trees than I originally budgeted, a lot more stone than I budgeted was required for the rear parking area. I originally didn't plan to install much fencing at all on this property, but we end up installing quite a bit of fencing to, uh, to separate the duplexes from the single family homes, to fence in the trash areas. And all of this was really driven by the special use permit requirements. And then look at this sidewalk steps. I went 10 grand over just on the sidewalk because it, the city, again, as part of the building permit, made us pour a brand new sidewalk in front of the property, something I didn't budget on. Here's another number that hit me square in the jaw that I didn't budget for, which was the rear alley the city for that forced us to completely repave. I, I never originally budgeted to have to repave the alley. It was a pretty, it was a pretty good shape, gravel. And, 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 and so a lot of this stuff also ate into my contingency. So most, most of my cost overruns came from really what it came from site work. It came from site work. So a, a lot of lessons were learned on this project. I created this budget before all my requirements from the special use permit and from our permitting were known to me. And so I under budgeted a lot of the site work that became required on this project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these lessons to budget better for the next similar project I built. So you're looking at this and you're saying, holy crap, dude, you went over budget by over a hundred grand on this project, almost 12 bucks a foot. You're at $144 a foot here, including soft costs. So how, how did this project turn out? Did you make money? Did you lose money? So let's look at it. So the first thing I'm able to do, if I, if I want true granularity into how my project performed, I, I'm just gonna click here and look at the post-construction project summary. I can select this report and it's auto-generated for me and I can immediately see, look, this is my as-built value, $2.2 million. This is a 9,600 square foot project. So what did things cost me? 22 bucks a foot for land, six and a quarter for soft costs, $138 a foot hard costs, right? So this is my estimated equity, not including my financing costs. I can look here and I can immediately tell you, okay, my architectural and engineering is four and a half bucks a foot. My building permits cost me about a dollar a foot. My holding costs are just under a dollar a foot, right? All the foundation and concrete slab work cost me just under 12 dollars a foot. I can show you what my framing costs, insulation, etc, etc. So 
I have clear granularity as to what things cost on this project. So how did it perform financially? Well, this is what was originally forecast, right? Purchase price of the land, original construction budget, as built value, and then cash flow. So I expected my total all-in cost to be this. And if I go and I just click, I can click here and enter my actual costs. So look at this. This is what I want you to see, right? Was this project still profitable? Like, holy crap, Daniel, you came in $12 a foot over budget. Did the project still work? Well, yeah, my all-in cost ended up still being only 74% of as-built value, which means I created 26% sweat equity in this project. Holy moly. Look, these are my rents. These are my real rents. I end up, we end up renting four apartments for 1900 bucks, four apartments for $1,800 a month. And so this thing cash flows $4,300 a month at a 12% cash and cash return. Now there is a caveat here, which is before I broke ground on this deal, I locked in a low interest rate before cost before rates shot up, right? So my, my permanent financing here is at three and a half percent. So now you say to yourself, okay, great. Like I can't finance anything at three and a half percent. How would this deal look at six and a half percent? Well, look at this at six and a half percent. This still cash flows over 500 bucks per duplex and the 6.2 cash and cash return which right now these days is a pretty good starting point, right? Because you know you know what else I did on this project? Let me show you something. First of all, this is, this is how it performed. Total project, land purchase, soft costs, hard costs, financing costs, total. So the four duplexes cost me $1.6 million to build, but they're worth $2.2 million. After my financing, I have 435 grand in cash invested but on top of the cash invested into this deal there is an additional five hundred sixty three thousand dollars in equity in sweat equity that i created so by doing this project i increased my net worth by close to six hundred thousand dollars all right and this thing puts over four grand a month over four grand a month into my pocket clean after all the expenses, after my in-house property management company takes a management fee, after we put 10% away into reserves and away for maintenance and capital improvements, after all expenses, this cash flow is clean, 4,300 bucks a month. Or look at it on the per duplex level. If you're wondering, what's it gonna cost you to build a duplex, right? This is what it costs me for land, soft costs, hard costs, all in cost, for this duplex is $409,000, but it's worth five fifty. dollars So by doing this project on just one duplex, I create over $141,000 in wealth. But here's the other thing that, that we did here, right? Even if I finance this at today's interest rates and my cash and cash return is somewhere between six and 7%, what else, what else do I get from this project? Well, on day one, let me just, let's just fast forward, right? Sorry. On day one, when we put these four duplexes into operation, I did a cost segregation study and I took a big chunk of depreciation on these projects right away. They're, they're in a phenomenal area, so they're going to appreciate over the next 10, 15 years faster than the overall market because this neighborhood is appreciating and being developed, right? So they're a tremendous wealth builder long-term. So I went over budget by 12 bucks a foot. I'm going to use those lessons to budget better for next time, but this project still turned out to be incredibly profitable. Here's something else I want to show you before I let you go. In this software, every time I do this kind of autopsy on my project and figure out what things truly cost, right? 
I go in and they update our budget templates. So let's say you're building a duplex from scratch. We are in the Richmond, Virginia, so our costs are kind of middle of the road as it relates to the whole country, right? We're not expensive like New York and California, and we're not cheap like certain parts of Texas and probably Midwest. So our costs are kind of middle of the road. They're probably pretty typical of a lot of parts of the United States. And so one of the things we've done in the software is, let's say you're building a duplex from scratch. Well, you're going to, you're going to go in here. You're going to enter your address and whatever we, we give you all kinds of data here. We give you rental comps, sales comps nationwide, but let's just say you're going to build a 2,400 square foot duplex, just like the ones I just showed you. What, what we give you is pre-built cost templates. So you're going to click here, detailed input, and instead of having to build out your budget from scratch, you can actually go here and click load template duplex new construction 2024 and this is going to give you a pre-built full scope of work and all you have to do is go here and enter some takeoffs from your drawings you can do these takes takeoffs yourself or your architect can give you these takeoffs but you're going to enter there's two units there's 180 linear feet of the foundation, 1,200 square feet to the foundation. Same thing for concrete. There's 28 windows. There's six exterior doors. And you can see as I'm entering the takeoff here, your budget number updates, right? So 30 interior doors, 15 squares to the roof, 30 squares of siding, etc., etc. right? Plumbing fixtures, electric fixtures, and we're going to keep going. And as I update my takeoffs, that's it. My budget is built. And you can see this is actually pretty in line with where my real costs came in for these duplexes, $330,000, right? And so all of this is pre-populated for you. You can modify this any way you want. All you have to do is go in here and just change quantities, add items based on your scope of work, delete items that don't apply to your scope of work. But this is a massive shortcut to, to your learning curve and to your ability to estimate these projects. And not only that, but of course, we give you ability to build full drag and drop schedules here. Very easy accounting, which your bookkeeper can do, or you can bulk upload all of your costs into the software in one go but that's how you get this granular tracking ability to be able to see exactly where your money is being spent during the project how much you've left to spend where you have overages and cost overruns and then we give you all kinds of other granular data that you can use to make better decisions make better estimates in, on future projects but hopefully this video is helpful right i wanted to show you what things really cost and again, my market is kind of middle of the road. It's, it's very similar to a lot of other markets in the US. We're not too high, we're not too low, kind of, kind of right in the middle, all right? So, where were we? Download the land due diligence checklist. Again, I, you know, I, I'm very transparent about our business. This is, this is exactly what this project looks like. And this is why I like building duplexes because they are incredibly profitable. They cash flow well. And even with today's interest rates and today's costs, if you're able to source your land at the right cost basis, you can do really good projects. So if this has been helpful, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We've got a, I've got a ton of very detailed, in-depth training on real estate development on our YouTube channel, right? Leave me a comment at the bottom. Let me, give me your questions. Let me know your thoughts. Anything that I wasn't clear, anything that I went too fast on. Share this video with anybody that you think would benefit from this. And then the the, the software platform I it is incredibly affordable. It's $49 a month. You can test drive it for a dollar by going to rehabvaluator.com forward slash try. We give you everything you need for developing these types of properties, nationwide rental comps, 
sales comps, pre-built cost templates and scopes of work, full-scale professional deal analysis, right? We give you lender presentations that you can generate with the click of a button to get funding for these types of deals and much, much more. So again, if you, if you don't have the software, take it for a test drive, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm putting out a lot of very detailed real estate development education that nobody else is really sharing. All, all the developers want to want to hold all of this stuff close to their vest, and I, I truly believe in making development more accessible to 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 average average people like us. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment, leave me your feedback, and 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 take action. Go do some deals.